So usually we filmmakers see a movie, we love the colors, and then we just want to replicate them within DaVinci Resolve. But this time for me, it was just the other way around, a real plot twist. I was in the movie Bugonia and sidekick here, it was a real 35 millimeter print film projection and getting that nowadays is so rare. So I was so happy to, to be able to see it on real analog film. But when I was sitting there and seeing the colors, I was like, damn, this looks so close, so close. We're not even exactly like a grade within Da Vinci. I just figured out before watching the movie. And that is why I want to show it to you right now to get that unique Bugonia film look for yourself. And all ingredients we need is the pro version of DaVinci Resolve because we need DCTLs to work and Filmverse Pro Textures and Filmverse Lite, both free to get. I have the link in the description. Shout out to the Filmverse team because it's so good. Like it's one of the best grading tools I've ever used, hands down. So let's dive right in and replicate it. So let's try and make that look like our reference image right here, which is not too hard with the tools we're going to use. So let's dive right in here and go out of the side by side view for a moment. Let's add a few nodes. Let's say a few working nodes should be enough. First of all, we do a color space transform. I assume you know how that works and how to set up your timeline to DaVinci White Gamut because that's what we do right here. We go from Arri White Gamut 3, Arri Log C3 to DaVinci Intermediate. Where is it? There we go. DaVinci White Gamut, uh, DaVinci Intermediate. And then we will get a film look creator on that node. And we use that as our primaries only. So we do a clean slate here for a moment. Here we will slap on our, we use that as second primary, we'll leave it empty for now. Here we use the DCTL. And here we use Filmers Pro Texture Type A. Then we leave it at default. And then here we use Filmers Light 1.4 and change the gamma to 2.4. Boom. And I have to say it's already pretty good. What we can tweak right now to get a bit closer is let's grab our reference for a moment. It's already so close, right? We want a bit more of that subtractive, sub, uh, subtractive saturation we get in the film look creator. tiny bit more contrast. And a good thing, the contrast in the film look creator, it is by default pivoting around the 18% gray point. Super good. Bit more of that contrast. Maybe a bit more of that subjective. There we are. That's it. That's basically it. Look at the reds of her. Look at the reds of that machine. Let's have a look at those wooden tones here. I mean, it is so freaking close. Let's pull up another example that I already graded in a similar manner. Or let's even copy that delete that grade just that you know I'm not cheating here, paste it, wait, paste, boom. 
it is so similar. Let's go here. Let's paste it. Boom. I mean, look at it. Tonality. It is so spot on. It is so spot on. I mean, look at it. It is so, so similar. And let's go to our first scene. I want to show it in full screen. I am shocked how good it works. Also on different other scenes. I mean, this is not like in the same ballpark though, because of the lighting situation itself. But I feel like this basement style situation is absolutely getting close. I don't know what I should do much more here to kind of tell you how to get that look. Because try filmers for yourself and you will pretty much nail it. That is pretty much it. That's a very short tutorial. That's a very short series, a very short explanation. Saves you a lot of time, hopefully. But if you are a nerd like me, stay here, stay with me because we will dive deeper. <laughs> and let's do that right now. Because I want to show you what makes Filmverse or the the ODT because this Filmverse light here it's an output display transform by default it's not just a look because you can see we go from DaVinci White Gamut and we can also use different cameras uh, manufacturers like Sony Red we can go for Blackmagic and so on or Asus we can convert that into Rec 709. 2.2 and 2.4, which is totally enough for most use cases. And we can also tweak the color finish in general. We can film the density ratios to our likings, which is kind of nice. Let's see how the red will be affected. It's quite significant. Um, we can even tweak just the reds itself, which also affects most of the orange tones. So we can really go for a lot of par parameters here and tweak them to our liking and really nail that film look, in my opinion. And not just that, let's compare the output display to trans transform how it performs, because when we pull up our our um, chart right here. Now it's kind of false because it is also pulling up this here, which kind of destroys it. So I have to get into the single viewer again. Boom. As you can see, nothing hits the wall of our gamut. Nothing hits the wall of our Rec. 709 gamut at all. In no case. In really no case. Even if I go in here and try and push, like to push the saturation with the worst tool you can use in DaVinci Resolve, which is the standard saturation, in no case it is ever hitting even if I push the highlights, even if I push whatever I want to push, look at it. I mean, it's totally stupid what I'm doing here, but I just want to show you, it's always rolling off smoothly at the borders of the gamut, at all cases, all the time. And this is something I am not getting with any other output transform. Let's pull another DCTL in right here and go for the famous JP2499. It's not really doing that. It's kind of 
brick walling into the gamut, into the borders of the gamut. I mean, for, for a lot of colorists, they want maximum control and shape it to their liking. I totally get it. But for people like me just, that, that just want a boom, easy going, straight out of the box look, no hassle, and it, it, it's looking great, you know, like that is so nice to, to get that smooth roll off, straight out of the box. Let's go back into, like back in here and use Open DRT, also very famous handling it much better but let's push the saturation even there we can see it's brick walling into the gamut's border which is something i personally don't like it's a personal preference don't get me wrong probably a lot of colorists prefer shaping it to their liking or compressing it however they want to but for me it's not what I like. I like this here. Smooth. Um, nothing really messing with it. And even the Da Vinci internal one, like the like let's let's pull up a color space transform. And uh, go out of SREC 709. <laughs> Even here, it's like totally brick walling. Totally. Even if I use saturation, com saturation compression is doing a good job in there, though. Like now we can finally see what we have with the DRT of uh, Filmverse. But, but, still, it doesn't really have a set limitation though. It's still kind of wonky with the reds and stuff and yeah, it's not. It, I just don't like it too much. I prefer what I'm getting out of Filmverse. I'm getting very rich tonalities, very like dense and rich tonalities without breaking the gamut. It's still very much composed. Even here, it's it's looking very saturated, very, very saturated. It's not like breaking too much of it, even here. So, um, big fan. So I'm so grateful that there is free stuff, like those DC tales are existing for the community. So we can develop beautiful looks like that one so easily. Please download that, support those developers because they pour their heart into it. I'm not even sponsored by them or anything. I just genuinely support what they do. I genuinely believe that what they do is great. I hope it will serve you too. And yeah, that's it. Short but hopefully informative. And I see you in the next video. Peace.